We end your day of basketball on the West Coast in beautiful San Diego, California, the Viejas Arena for one more game to play. And one final spot in the Sweet 16 here to punch. We have number nine against number one, TCU against Arizona for a spot in San Antonio. Houston's already going to be there, beating Illinois earlier here today and waiting to see if it will be Arizona or TCU. Thank you for joining us, Lisa Byington. I'm the point guard, shooter, point guard. You're sandwiching between a couple of point guards. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Steve Smith, Avery Johnson, our head coach is Lauren Shahadi, if you will, on the sideline. And Avery Johnson, we have not yet seen in number one Arizona Wildcat team at full strength. We'll get to that in just a second. Who we have seen is Christian Coloco in the last game. He put up a stat line that we haven't seen in the NCAA tournament here before. Yeah, Christian Coloco, the product of Cameroon. 7'1", uh, 230 pounds, uh, just outstanding defensively, offensively. Put it all together in, in that last game. Here he is with block shots, a much improved post-up player. Soft hands around the basket. He towers above the defenders, and then he can really go up top. From 7 1 to 8 5, it seems like, when he catches lobs. And Avery, you talked about the big for Arizona, but his guard play in the backcourt scoring for the Horn Frogs. Damian Bile was fantastic. Him and Mike Miles, they play off each other extremely well. You look what they're combined. They had 35 points, they shot 14 for 27, eight assists. Just had five turnovers. They can create their own off the bounce. They are a handful. If the Horn Frogs are going to win, it's up to those two. And defensively, too, keep an eye on Damian Baugh, who will most likely get the initial assignment on Ben Matherin, who's the Pac-12 Player of the Year. You won't see Kerr Creesa here in this starting lineup as of yet. We don't know if he's going to play here tonight. So Justin Kyer gets another start here this year. Tommy Lloyd in his first year as the Arizona head coach. Can he get his number one Wildcat team into the Sweet 16? The final tip here in San Diego. We're underway. First possession to Arizona. Blocked from behind. Lampkin might have got a piece of that. Yes, he did. He let you know what his facial expression, Lisa. He did. He is into the game already. He might not put up double figures, but he's something to watch with his celebration. Boy, drilling it is Chuck O'Bannon on his first shot. And that's one of the things Coach Jamie Dixon talked about by inserting Chuck O'Bannon into the lineup at that four position. Now they have more spacing to operate. And once he starts to knock down those threes and bring those bigger Arizona front line players away from the basket, that's going to open. Open the floor up for TC. O'Bannon or PV has replaced Micah PV. O'Bannon has replaced Micah PV in the last 24 games after PV started the year in the starting line. After one thought about it, I mentioned he's the Pac-12 Player of the Year. Averages about 17 points per game, and here's his first look. Eddie Lampkin does a nice job as a big, being able to slide his feet, get out on hedges, being able to contain, collect, and then get back. And pay attention, especially on the next Arizona possession. Can they get their high-low post-up game into it? But Miles Jr. and Kyra was all over it, but a little bit too much as he made contact above the shoulders on Miles Jr. for his first personal. That's not the type of foul you want to have. And I know Tommy Lloyd is talking to his player. He gets to get to the chance to get to the free throw line and their score to see some free throws go down. He's got three free throws coming up. You saw Jamie Dixon there and returning to his alma mater. Got the first win in the NCAA tournament. You got to go back 35 years when he was actually a player for TCU. The keys to the game for you guys. What do you got? Well, for me, it's assist to turnover for the Horn Frogs. They got to get shots up on the rim, and they have to get possessions, no empty possessions, and they have to have way more assist and turnovers. And Arizona's got to dominate the glass. You, you're really talking about a team with TCU. They, they get about 45% of their uh, misses, and they got to rebound against this TCU team. Annual Miller picks up the first personal. As watching practice yesterday, Jamie Dixon challenged Miller 
and said, give me the ball pressure like you did Friday against Seton Hall. And, and a little bit too close for comfort to picking up his first personal, but you can see where his mentality is tonight. Yeah, you're totally right. It's totally different for him, though. He's guarding a guy that's a power forward. That ball pressure is going to be different because they're down there on the paint. He's about to rebound and get out and run. They did exactly that, and here they are running. Ball trying to lay it off. Ball hanging high off the glass for two. That's interesting to see in terms of, you know, philosophies by coaches. Some coaches, they'll get a timeout here. Others, will, you know, they'll let their team play, and it seems like Arizona's oh. going to continue to play. From behind, it was Miller. Right on time, Lisa. The intensity by Miller on that block shot. And then Coloco cleans it up. And Arizona's on the board. Here's a look for Emmanuel Miller. Oh, the tip follow. What a start for O'Pannon. The most exciting player on the team <laughs> is Eddie Lampkin. No matter what kind of play is made, he'll let you know the positive players. Backdoor look, and boy, Arizona and their back cuts something that every opponent has to tangle with. Yeah, outstanding passing team. You know, this year just one of the best team passing teams in the nation, statistically, and also just the eye test. I mean, they just look good when they're in their offense and they're moving without the ball. Yeah, let's watch. Chuckle Bannon Jr. go up and get it. And look at the Horn Frogs, their teammates is excited. Somebody has to box out. And boy, did he go get that one. And to your assist stat, you talk about every the, the Arizona Wildcats, they assist on 65% of their field goals has been assisted. That is big time. They average more than 20 assists. Number one in the country. I was assisting you, Smitty. That's why I allowed you to yeah, read that you. stat. Shoot and shoot. <laughs> Kyer directing traffic, again, getting the start in the place of Creasa. Those quick hands here from TCU. Let's remember the Horn Frogs are in the Big 12, so they face Baylor, they face Kansas, two number one seeds here in the tournament. In fact, they beat Kansas back on March 1st. Taking on a number one seed is not intimidating for them. There's the back door and the lay-in there for Kyer. Justin Kyer drove that one, straight line drive. Coloco did a nice job, held his big up so he couldn't get over and rotate. Easy layup. Miles from about 15 feet out. Mike Miles got in a little foul trouble in the last game, but still had an outstanding game. And led his team in scoring. Mathurin with a strong take. What do they call? But an offensive foul call and number one on Mathurin. You love when kids love defensively. They get excited taking this charge. Damian Bile, like he takes this one. He's there. Wait for it. Take it in the chest. Horn Frogs up six. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Let's check in with the third member of our team, Lauren Shahadi, for the first time as we see Kirk Creasa has entered the game, Lauren, and I think this building is appreciative of it. It's true. I'm by the bench, Lisa, and Lloyd pointed to Kerr and said it's go time. The two extra days rested him well because I saw him at practice yesterday. He doesn't lack confidence at all. I asked him, how's the ankle? Check out this photo of it. He took the basketball, drove to the basket, passed three defenders for the layup, and then looked back at me and said, you have your answer how my ankle is. I said, yes, I do. We'll take a, photo, a look at that photo in just a bit. we got to prep the audience, though, for a little bit to give them some pause to be able to digest what they're about to see, because that ankle injury is not pretty. It's his right ankle. He's missed the last three games. Last time he's played was March 10th. Here's Creason challenging, and he draws the offensive foul. Just like that, making a difference. And that's the one thing about an ankle injury. Offensively, you're OK. Defensively, this is where you're going to get challenged. And he took this one right in the chest, and they landed on his ankle. Well, we told you to 
<laughs> pause for a second and digest this and look away. And uh, I don't I don't blame you if you want to do that. That is a picture that he took. And and the the bruising you can still see uh, just above his his right sock even today. It's something that he injured himself in the final seconds against Stanford in the Pac-12 Conference Tournament. Larson with a look. And that's a set play, a little bit of a decoy screen on the pick and roll, but they're looking for Lawson to come off and, and knock down the three. This building was jumping with Arizona fans, but now that Creasa is under the game, it really is, and Coloco gets his fourth point. Two for two from the field here so far. And as we said in the open, once Coloco gets that jump hook above his head, it's hard to contest it. And if you're a smaller defender, it's over. Did he call glass on that? <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's the celebration that counts he for Eddie his, Lampkin. He stuck his tongue out and said, yes, I did. I guess with Lampkin, he said the banks are closed, but maybe the ATM is open. <laughs> <laughs> but then you see Coloco down low. Great deep position, goes to that jump hook. And what I, what I love about his jump hook, he is way over the rim. He is shooting down on it. Andrew, you highlighted the game that he had against Wright State. So it reminds you of his stat line. 17 points, 13 rebounds, six assists, five blocks. All in 31 minutes of play. Never been undone before in the NCAA tournament. Seven points for Coloco to begin with, floating and rising high, but Miles can't get it to drop. Here's the high roll. Coloco with the finish. That could kill TCU here tonight. That Whoa. is almost unstoppable. Isn't it? Francisco had no chance at 6 <laughs> 3 against Coloco trying to front. Peavy, pump fit, tried the back door, tries to chase it down, and he touched it last. It'll be Arizona basketball. Look at this high low. Francisco had no chance. You better off stand behind him so the defense can help because they cannot get there quick enough when you're that small trying to front. And guys, it'll be interesting that practice yesterday, they constantly were practicing that fronting of that high low with the help side coming over on the week. It'll be interesting to see if they continue to do that defensively. I'm willing to bet that that's, that strategy is going to change pretty fast. Maybe we'll get a chance to show you after next time. That's not going to be effective against Arizona. Farabello on the push, gets it out to ball. Obana Jr. with the kick out and the handoff to Farabello. He's the best three-point shooter TCU has. They find a post touch for Lampkin. And working it around nicely in the perimeter. Oh, Pannon's got another. He has eight for the game. Yeah, excellent ball movement. Quick, quick decisions. That's what you got to make quick decisions against this Arizona defense. Two things right there. You get a chance to get him a three-point shooter. They don't shoot it well. Good move by Coloco. And then also you get him this confidence. It loosens up that defense. And for Chuck O'Bannon, he only had four points and it was four from the free throw line. Coloco's got the last nine here for Arizona. 11 for the game, hasn't missed a shot yet. Inside 12 minutes, they were looking for O'Bannon. Three turnovers here for TCU. Got the mismatch here with Coloco inside. Terry high off the glass. Coloco with the rebound. Finish. What a start. 13 in the game. Yeah, the big fellas going to work. You talked about that stat. Unbelievable stat line in the last game. He's making his impact on this game tonight. 
Let's take a look at the 7-1 junior, Christian Coloco. They're going to front him. Great hands, great catch. There's a jump hook once again over the top. Dumped that one. Last one, offensive glass. Look at the rebound. He has been fantastic. 13 points, and now with Lauren with Coach Lloyd. Coach, a nice run after a slow start. What's been the difference? Oh, I mean, these games are long. I don't know if we had a slow start. I mean, they hit a couple threes early and, and banked in a jumper. It's how these games go. We just got to hang in there and get in the flow a little bit. How much can you get from Kerr? Oh, he was great. I mean, he already looks good to me. So we'll see how it goes tonight. But uh, I mean, it's good to have him back. Thanks, Coach. Carissa has already made an impact on an offensive foul. He's gotten a rebound. No points here so far, but you just feel the Smitty, the edge that, that you were saying that is maybe the most important thing that he can bring this Arizona Wildcats yes, team. Yes, we know the stats. He's their point guard. He's their leader. But he's their emotional guy. He gets after it. He's going to take chances both offensively and defensively, and he's going to get the crowd into it. First lead of the game here for Arizona. I had to look twice at that. Doesn't feel like this should be their first lead. Now here's TCU in their flex offense with the baseline staggers for O'Bannon. So they flex you one or two times, and then at the end to finish this play, then O'Bannon comes off her two screens on the baseline for looking for a wide open three. It's Arizona's other seven footer to Coloco, Umar Ballo, who picks up the first personal and setting Eddie Lampkin Jr. to the free throw line. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar is the is it the best Coke ever? Like the goat? Is this fat checks? Well, you just can debate the goatness amongst yourselves. Remember that, Lisa? That's a, we were doing that all every game last year. Why is this our final game? And that's the only time I've heard you say that. Had to save it. Matherin picks it up. The one-handed hammer of Cubellis. Cubellis made a statement on that one. He wanted somebody to jump on that one. I'm glad he didn't grab the rim first and then dunk it like in our first game. <laughs> Miles step back. Look at Kerr pushing the tempo. Averages close to five assists on the season. Nice pass. The point guard just helps everybody. I think it's going to also help with Matherin get some easier looks. Yeah, in, in situations like that, big guys got to bail out the guard by catching the ball with two hands. Ball security first before he starts his move. Guarding it in. That's a tough angle. The tip. Lampkin stays with it for two. He's got five. Eddie Lampkin is into it. Sealing on that offensive rebound. Larson. Tight close out that time on O'Bannon. Ball shovel pass here to Miles Jr. Over to Peavy. Look like they're trying to post up Lampkin here. Not horns down, angle, pick and roll. Miles Jr. went flying out of bounds, throws it away into the hands of Matherin. Oh, oh. Try the Euro step. Watch this one. That's the hammer. Great cut off basket, off the ball, and nothing Eddie could do because he was locked up on his man. Somebody missed the assignment. It's our AT&T 5G taking us above the rim for one of the best plays of the night. Tubella is one of the many international players that Arizona has here on this roster. You think, well, Tommy Lloyd was the international recruiter, right, at Gonzaga? So, of course, I mean, no, he inherited, ironically, <laughs> these international players. And the response for Carissa entering or leaving the game, I should say. You see Kerr on the back, that's his first name. The reason why he's got Kerr on the back, he kept it 25. There's another Kerr who played for Arizona, Steve Kerr. Loved watching him play, not necessarily at Arizona when he was a Chicago Bull. 
Yeah, because at, at his age, I don't know how he got a chance to see him play in Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> There's always YouTube, Smitty. Oh, OK, my bad. That's, I what, that's what the kids do these days. I would have been more impressed if he was the 1999 NBA champion, <laughs> Steve Kerr. <laughs> Baseline jam for O'Bannon Jr. He's got 10. Good hustle from TCU, the Horn Frogs. Xavier Cork doing a nice job of front and getting that deflection. Miles Jr., wow, tough angle and tough finish for his seventh point. What I love about him, Lisa, he stays on balance, doesn't turn his back, has his strength and body control to always finish. Matherin gets wrapped up, and a jump ball will send it back TCU's way. Yeah, you're right. You know, Mike Miles Jr., he's the one player that can compete with, with Arizona physically. Look at this drive, move, ball movement by TCU, three or four passes. O'Bannon Jr. has been outstanding early to start this game. He's made two threes. So the combination of O'Bannon Jr. and Mike Miles, they're combined for 17 points to start the game. Let's Five turnovers and back-to-back -back turnovers, though, for this Arizona offense as TCU looks to go back to work, building on this two-point advantage. He is so strong, being able to hold the defender off. Gives it to Bob. And Bob, I think, saw that seven-footer Coloco and just sort of threw it high in the air to see what would happen. Tire for three. Damian Ball done a nice job of boxing out Coloco. That's not an easy job for him. Yeah, and Coach Lloyd was really disappointed with that last shot because they had Coloco sealed inside against a smaller defender. And a Coloco who hasn't missed a shot, too. Six for six from the field here so far. That's a deep three there for Miles Jr. So far, doing a nice job of keeping Ben in check. After now, that's a good drive by him. Did finish. Coloco seven for seven for 16 points in the first half. Clean it up, big fella. Clean it up. Nice drive and an even better finish for Coloco. When on that drive, you got to get somebody else to come in and crack back and get the big off the glass when you commit two defenders. Miles Jr. with the floater, missing everything. It'll be Arizona basketball. Not bad for his 80th dunk of the season, guys. No, not at all. Coloco all over. Like you said, Lisa, he's seven for seven. We have a ball game all knotted up in San Diego. Get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. We take a look at the game summary. It's really second chance points that is the, the big difference here for Arizona. It made a huge difference with the offensive rebounding. Part of the conversation Lauren Shahadi had moments ago with Jamie Dixon. Coach, you told me you can't let your offense affect your defense. Your thoughts so far? Uh, rebounding's have been a key. Offensive rebounds have hurt us. That's what we do, and they're beating us on that. So we got to get that changed. How do you contain Coloco? Well, offensive rebounds. He's hurt us in that, and so we'll do the job in that. Uh, just get do their job, physical, block them out. Thanks, Coach. Guys, Coloco has four rebounds here for the game, and all four on the offensive rebounding side, and five points now for Mathurin. Yeah, we just talked about it in the break. We'd like to see more energy and passion from Mathurin. He's got his left thumb taped. I don't know if that was something that's contributing to his slow start, but he's not happen now. Yeah, he did. And he's the Pac-12 player of the year, averaging 17 points. He just has to get going as far as being aggressive. And another, that's the second time that, that Kyer has had that tight closeout and is sending Miles Jr. to the free throw line for three. He has, and that's what you don't want to do. Look at Coach Lloyd's face, the way he's staring down Kyer. That's twice. Following the guy shooting a three-point shot. To read his lips. Come on, Justin. Justin said he kicked out. You know what I love in situations like that? 
Accountability, huh? Lisa, that's right. the thing. <laughs> He's trying everything. I don't blame you, Justin. Hey, he kicked out. I slipped. Whatever it takes. Get the coach off my back right yeah. now. But this, you know, if Miles, he's, he's fortunate. This is like a triple play in baseball, right? If he's able to knock down all three of these free throws, I know we're getting ready for baseball season, but hey, that's, that's what came to mind. <laughs> Kirk Krisa has checked back in to this game. <laughs> Avery, you, you, you followed Mike Miles Jr. even as a, as a, a little type, right? Your, your son and, and Mike Miles Jr. play for the same AAU program, the Texas Titans. You've watched it for a long time. Oh, uh, watched this kid grow up when he was little Mike Mike running around the gym in fifth grade. and <laughs> But he, he was the best player on the AAU circuit in fifth and sixth grade, trust me. And I just really love that he stayed close to home. His family can come and watch him play. And uh, just good family. <laughs> the Locos having a field day. And one of the things that Coach Dixon said about Mike Miles is he loves how you know, he was a little quiet early in his career. He's much more vocal now, and he's improved significantly defensively. O'Bannon Jr. looking for the answer. Coloco with another rebound, five. That's the first that he's had on the defensive side. Off of Creasa last. Creasa doesn't agree with that one. He brings that energy, and he is upset on that play, but a beautiful play by him to draw the defense and get Coloco another easy bucket. Coloco's eight for eight, 18 points and five rebounds, four of them offensively. Yeah, three dunks and four layups. <laughs> His team, too, and finding him at the right time in the right places. Napkin Puffin. He took it to Coloco that time. Got him up in the air and made him pay. Might have got away with not getting a technical foul because that was a lot of extra on the rim, big fella. Larson high off the glass and in one. I mean, Eddie put a lot into this one and Larson. Yeah, it, it, let's it, watch it, this, Avery. <laughs> Catch it, big fella. Good up and under. Donkey, you got to let it go. Let it go. Emotion. He got away with a, a tech. And here comes Lawson back with the floater. Off the glass. Kerr loves it after turning the ball over the last time. And that's how you attack a shot blocker, right? You can't just catch the ball inside and allow Coloco to just play volleyball, right? So nice shot fake, got Coloco out of position, and the big fella went up there and finished strong. And Larson looking to finish off the third and one for Arizona here in this first half. Another close one here in San Diego. The door's not a turnover. That was an easy bucket if Coloco doesn't give that extra effort. Oh, Paolo, that was a deep attempt. Coloco with another rebound. That's the one you got to fake it up and throw the bounce pass. Coming from behind, Mike Miles Jr. Seven turnovers here for Arizona. Obana Jr. pulls. I'm not sure. Got a nice look. Let's see if Mathurin can knock down a three here. That shot, they're gonna not count it. It was a foul there on the floor. Doug Shows, Keith Kimball, Eric Curry, your officials here in our second game. Micah Piva, Peavy has picked up his second. Yep, Ben Matherin looked at that three-point shot. The defender went underneath, which is a mistake on that pick and roll, and then he rescreened it and got fouled. But I don't think TCU can afford to go underneath his screens and roll. Pick and rolls at the free throw line, he'll make you pay. It's part cook and competition, part who done it. Six cooks compete, one cook tries to secretly ruin everyone's dish. 
Rat in the Kitchen, a new competition series, March 31st on TBS. It's my birthday, March 31st. Is it really? Yeah. That's me, do you know when my birthday is? March 20th. You're Aries, okay. March 25th. Yeah, Friday. I'm stubborn. I'm expecting a gift. I got you. <laughs> I got you. I thought Tauruses were stubborn. <laughs> I don't know about that. You a Taurus? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> right about that. Aries. That's a guess. Miles Jr. trying to split the double team. And the foul is committed. Dale and Terry picks up the first. Watch CBS Sports HQ for the best coverage of the big dance. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more on the free 24-7 Sports News Network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Look at our tournament summary, and St. Peter's is, is one of the big stories, the third 15 seed to reach the Sweet 16. Five straight tournaments, again with Baylor losing without the reigning champ in the Sweet 16. And in the game that we saw earlier here on this very court, Texas Tech, 12th NCAA tournament wins since 2018. Chris Beard leaving to take the Texas job, and his top assistant, Mark Adams, Filling in the shoes in year number one at Texas Tech back in the Sweet 16 again. Tap that pass away and off and running. Terry leading it. Matherin lost it. Got poked from behind, but they say it's off TCU last. They got off of Emmanuel Miller. And one of the things that we talked about even in our production meeting, TCU, they weren't going to be scared of Arizona. They played Kansas, what, three times in a 10-day period. They played against Texas that's in the tournament. So there, there's not going to be any fear. Sure, our kids are nervous sometimes, and, and that's okay. But they, they're not going to be scared of Arizona. This is the sixth number one seed, if you will, to factor in Baylor and Kansas and tonight against Arizona, that this TCU team has played in a 10-week span. They played Kansas three times, just the way the schedule kind of played out. They played Kansas three times in a 10-day span going into this NCAA tournament. Kresa, that shot is blocked. He was looking for the foul call. And <laughs> still talking to Doug Shows about it. And one of the things when I was talking about production meeting, just want to let fans know that we prepare the, for these That games. we work. Yeah, we work. We're not just on the beach Behind in San Diego. Right. No, not at all. we got to prepare for these games. <laughs> Good defensive presence right there. Foul on Kerr. Good job by Damian Bile just to attack Kerr, test that ankle. Oh, he he's, again, you see the Kerr on the back of his jersey. He did contact Steve Kerr, and, and uh, obviously the, the 25 was uh, unavailable for most, but Steve Kerr kind of given the nod, and, and he was giving the nod back to Steve Kerr and keeping his first name on the back of his jersey. You got to think that's part of TCU scouting report that, hey, this guy had a serious ankle injury when he comes in. This not allow him to rest on defense. Let's pressure him even more on offense and test that ankle. He's out of the game here right now. TCU, what could they do with this offensive possession? Three attempt. That's what they can do. O'Bannon likes that spot. Chuck O'Bannon is feeling it. His jump shot is wet. He's doing a nice job of getting it on balance. And there's no hesitation. He's pulling. 13 it's points. Great elevation on his jump shot as well. Matherin, the double team coming, finds the corner and a turnover. Ball. Well, that's the shots that you got to knock down if you're TCU, and Arizona's got to have better transition oh. defense. Good rebound by Miller. Boy, he can get up. Miller battling for it, and we got a jump ball. All three officials calling the jump ball at the same time. Even though possession goes to the Wildcats, give a lot of credit to Emmanuel Miller. Well, that was sensational, that offensive rebound. He's the team's leading rebounder, gets just over six per game. Got some hops to him. Arizona has significant size advantage here inside. Let's see if they can get their high-low game going. 
Here it is. Coloco. That's his first miss. Physical down there on the block. O'Banion Jr. Not there that time. Terry with the rebound. They see it. To help him out, Avery. That's good, that's good point guard vision, Avery Johnson. They had a game earlier where there was a somebody fell out, and then there was a steal, and the kid was coming out to mop the floor, and there was a steal on the other end coming back. <laughs> Almost ran into him. <laughs> you have the mop in your hand, you got to have eyes in the back of your head. After he gets a look, what a tough angle and a stare down to the TCU bench. A little bit of talking, and that might get Ben going. Timeout, TCU. Matherin's in double figures with 10. Yeah, you're talking about having eyes behind the back of your head. Look like Matherin on this underneath out of bounds had eyes behind the basket, and it was all net from San Diego. Arizona up by five. <laughs> yeah, now you have 11 versus a 10. I'm sure a lot of people had those in their brackets. Let's check in with Laura Chahadi. Lisa, just listening to Coach Dixon, he said, how is Christian Coloco wide open underneath? He has 18, can't afford it. He said, out rebound by 10, and we win this game. Good stuff, Laura. Who, by the way, works really hard to try to get. <laughs> That's still part of the huddles. We've seen her down on one knee, stretching her neck. They hear in this really around. loud arena. <laughs> Miller gets it to drop. The huddle comes back around and runs back to the other huddle. Yes, she does. Chahani's our MVP. Energy. We have proof. <laughs> that high low look again, guys. Ballo gonna get a plus one at the free throw line. This is tough. I mean, the size factor, as you can see, Bow trying to play him down low. Good pump fake. Good pass over. And see again. First of all, you got a guard defending the backup center, but when the passer is at the free throw line, you cannot front a post player. The pass is too short, it's too easy. With a nine scorer at the free throw line, you have to play front and back. There's no defense defender that can get there in time to help versus a front. Miller drops it off, and Lampkin nearly had the bucket. Ballo picks up his second. Eddie Lampkin Jr. In his second year wearing that TCU jersey. Coming up on the AT&T at the half, scores highlights, the latest NCAA tournament news. It's all next on AT&T at the half. It was a beautiful drive. The close out by Emmanuel Miller. He gets it to Eddie. And a nice little pocket pass. He can move quicker. Lauren Shahadi's story, uh, as we've been here this weekend, he dropped 70 pounds. Began at 335, now around 270. It's the lightest he has been since his sophomore year in high school. He's good agility for his size. It's a nice job. You watch him on pick and rolls. He comes up and collects. And speaking of size, the shortest player on the court for Arizona is 6'5". 6'5", 6'6", 6'7", at the 1, 2, and 3 spot. Not to even mention the, the big guy from Cameroon at 7'1". It was a step back. They're the tallest team left in the tournament. Even in the regular season next to Florida State, they're number one, but who's left now in this March Madness? Size-wise, it's Arizona. The two seven-footers help <laughs> as well. Final few seconds here of this first half, and this crowd heavy towards Arizona. Lampkin staying with it. Ooh, trying to will their team to an empty possession. I know he missed a shot, but Mike Miles did a nice job. He did not settle, drove the defender, then collapsed the defense. Two guys came over, and nobody could have body, a body on Eddie. 
Azulis to Bellis, picks up his first. Lampkin Jr. back at the free throw line. I mentioned this crowd. I mean, they have been loud from the jump. And we got TCU fans, and, and this place is, is mostly filled with Arizona fans. Tommy Lloyd, let's not forget, challenged the fans who felt like they, they had trouble, granted, getting into the building with some logistical issues. But he wanted to hear some noise from the beginning. We are hearing noise in this building for sure tonight. And we definitely have more fans here tonight. And Tommy Lloyd will call his use it or lose it timeout with 2.2 left in the half. The Sweet 16 begins Thursday with the Nissan NCAA tip-off on TBS at 6 p.m. Eastern, followed by doubleheaders on CBS and TBS. You see Doug Shouse and Eric Curry there at the monitor trying to figure out, A, where, where Arizona is going to inbound the basketball, right, when the timeout was called, and then how much time we have left on the clock. Yeah, I thought it was going to be around 3.3, but yeah, 3.1, that's good. They got it right. They added 0.9. They added, yep, so it's 3.1, and they will take it out from the baseline. There's a question of if Tommy Lloyd was able to call the timeout on the, the inbound and the catch. Yeah, he was asking the referees on miss or make. I wanted a timeout. A little bit of a late whistle. And they just wanted to get the clock right. Now, here they'll look to get Kerr Creaser maybe coming off of a, he was open. Now they'll shoot it from half court. Dalen Terry from half court. The heave nearly there. Seven ties, three different lead changes. It's a three-point edge here for Arizona. Yeah, they wanted to get Kerr Crease for coming off of a, what they call a banana cut. Starting on one side and cutting to the other side on a little bit of a loop. Let's check in with Lauren, who's with Coach Lloyd. Coach, you wanted the crowd, you got it. What will you tell them in there? Um, I, mean, I can't hear you, sorry. I couldn't. Um, hey, I don't think we played very good yet. We're up three. You know, we got to play better in the second half. And, you know, they're, they're big fellas really outworking us. We got to do a better job. Thank we told you it was loud here in this building. Both sides making some noise. It's the end of the first half with the score. Arizona 39, TCU 36 will send you to the AT&T at the half after these messages. One of these two teams spot the Sweet 16. The sun is now set. Little nighttime basketball here on the West Coast. TCU and Arizona taking a look at the degree first half stats. It's a tight ball game. And either team really shooting great from distance. Rebounding is a factor, points in the paint, and second chance points. Chuck O'Bannon has been a factor here for TCU in the first half. He's done a nice job, came out shooting the basketball with terrific confidence, staying active on that big time offensive rebound and dunk. Catches this one, dunks that one. But what I like when he's catching is no hesitation. The defense is not able to close out, especially with his size. He also has three steals. The fourth member of our team, Lauren Shahadi, what Jamie Dixon have to tell you? And just now saying, where's the post pressure? You got to do more in the paint and you got to rebound. He said, we will not win if we lose the boards. It won't happen. Tough to do with, uh, we've talked about it, Arizona now with uh, some of the eliminations in this tournament, the tallest team in the NCAA tournament. And of the field of 68 is the second tallest team. very important for TCU to not be lazy with their passes. Sometimes you have to fake one and make one, especially against a team with this type of length and size of, as we've been talking about the entire day. Ball goes back door to Lampkin. His sixth double-figure scoring game of his career, guys. Well, that was vision and perfect pass by Damian Bile. He put that one on the money. Gets the start here for Arizona. Kirk Carissa will be coming off the bench again here in the second half. There's the poke away. And look at Ball go. He's got that speed. And get the bucket. Well, it was great hesitation to give himself an avenue to be able to lay that one up. Just it couldn't finish. Excellent recovery by Arizona. Not giving up on the play. Not pouting about a turnover. Ooh, Miles Jr. cut up. Leads to this ball. With 
the finger roll finish. Mike Miles said, let me have that one. The point guard wouldn't block that one. Miles is open. Always <laughs> trying to repay the favor. <laughs> Matherin, pump fake. He'll take it inside. Yeah, on that last pass in transition, you especially when Coloco is open, you got to. You got to. That pocket pass. You see it, yeah. Avery? Right between two defenders. Mm, Mike Miles Jr. went got up. And that's the one I like right there. Take away his jumping ability, go into his chest. And on those pocket passes in between two defenders, it's very important when you bounce the ball and make a bounce pass that the ball pops up high to your teammate. You don't want the ball to skid and go out of bounds. There's a technique to that. Lisa did she used to do that when she played in college. Oh, all the time. <laughs> Lisa <laughs> Breed, Lisa never passed. That is so not true. Never that passed. is that is absolutely not true. I was a pass first point guard. No, you weren't. Score second. Michael Peavy has checked in. You know I've been knowing you for a long time, Lisa. A long time. Over a decade long. I got the tape on the kids called the receipts. <laughs> Emmanuel Miller has taken a seat here for TCU. He's picked up three personals. There's that double team coming that Mike Miles Jr. typically sees, but he finds O'Pannon for yet another three-pointer. It's 16 here for the game. Point guards, when you see a double team, you attack the big. That's what Mike Miles Jr. did. Turned the corner and got Chuck O'Bannon a wide open three. Matthew looking for the answer. And the rebound to Peavy. We did think about it. We'll give and go, drawing the contact on Coloco. And you notice the last two times, TCU's doing a nice job of attacking Coloco's body. Nice three here by O'Bannon. Boy, he's got a funky little bit of a release behind the head, but it works for him. But again, when these drivers are going to the basket to try to slow down Coloco success from blocking shots. They're not even worried about going in finger rolling. They're going straight to his body. Watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. Avery, to your point, only the first foul here on Coloco tonight. See if they continue to kind of hunt his body in the paint. An 11-2 run right now, though, for TCU. And the fans are into it. You see the defense right now stepping up. Terry trying to muscle it in. Lampkin with the rebound. In traffic. Lampkin with a nice one. Peavy. And that was Tubelis that got a piece of that. Look at Lampkin. Get on the tech. The big man is fighting for it. Go, 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 go. Hey. Hey. That is hustle, Lisa and Avery. And he went down and got it. I don't blame the Wildcat. He looked at Eddie Diamond and he said, nah, I'm going to let him have that one. He made a business decision. And yeah. Terry said, nah, that's OK. I'm not going to go ahead and play with him. And Eddie, that's a good time hustle. Lampkin trying to give the clock to the day one. <laughs> this is what March Madness yes, is all about. Is. He's going mad, but in a good way. Oh, back the other way, two colors and one. Hey, look at Eddie, that soft touch. Over the outstretched Coloco, knocks it down, but watch the big fella afterwards. <laughs> let, let me hear it, Eddie. And then Chuck O'Bannon Jr., you got to watch the coaching staff after he made this. They jumped up and said, you can't give him left. Yeah, that's where that scouting report comes in. You, you have your system defensively as a team, but then the scouting report talks about individual strengths and weaknesses and what you want to accomplish on defense. And defensively, they definitely want to force Tabellis to his right hand. They haven't even inbounded the ball, and Lampkin's talking to himself. Getting them fired up for this offensive possession. Miles Jr. from the win. Thirteen. 
what was Mike Mouse signifying there that you put your hand in my face and I still made it? That's where it law play to Coloco. His six 20 point game. Career high is 24. Got it. Touch pass there going for Coloco. A little tie up there with Miles Jr. Lampkin Tobolin. Like he came down on his right angle. Look at the pass. The recover. And the close out was too late. Miles knocked that one down. Yeah, Horn Frog fan, you're hoping Big Eddie is okay because he's giving you some big time play. Five for five, 13 points, seven rebounds, two block shots. He's been good. The Lawrence halftime report talking to Coach Lloyd. He said, Eddie has given us problems on the glass. We got to get him off the glass. And this is what happened to Lampkin. You see him in the middle of your screen. Hmm. Really couldn't tell. I don't he got know kicked by. Chuck O'Bannon. Okay. Junior on that drive. Yeah, it looked like it's the top of his right foot. And then hopefully he'll be okay. Look like he's up moving, trying to shake it off. You see there, just the sixth double figure scoring game. He's a guy who played about 34 minutes last year in 10 games. You mentioned the, the fact that he's dropped his weight which has made him quicker, better. He's put in some time to become a starter this year here for TCU. And a moving screen, an offensive foul. Presa picks up his second. Excellent call. He said Lisa Presa was moving, as you can see. Steps right into there. He's definitely moving. Yeah. Good call. Arizona bringing the pressure. That double team coming against PV. We got a jump ball call. <laughs> and guys, teams have different terminology for that part of the court. We used to call it jail. You don't want to go to jail. Stay out of jail. So we'll see what happens on the other side. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, the best Coke ever, like the GOAT. Is this fact-checked? We can debate the GOATness. No debate here, Smitty. Eddie Lampkin has certainly had a presence for TCU here tonight. He's played extremely well. These are called hustle plays. You see the rebound in traffic. Get on the floor, big fella. Control it. Keep the possession going. He also had a nice floater. He's up walking around. That's good news for TCU. Yeah, walking better, too. 13 points and seven rebounds. Out of that timeout, they gave Matherin the look. And Matherin is now two of nine, two of seven for three-point territory. The rip away, Terry will take it and lays it in for two. Yeah, and I don't think any team left in the tournament can get in the foot race with the Arizona Wildcats. Yeah, especially Terry. He's got a little quick to him. And here comes the Wildcat crowd, another turnover. Back-to-back -back turnovers on back-to-back -back possessions. Coloco with that back down, goes off the glass. 22 for the big man. Yeah, and Coach Dixon is wondering where the, where's the double team, right, Smitty? Yes, indeed. When we talk to the Arizona coaching staff in practice, they teach him to go off the glass. They usually bark it up on the big one on the board, and he scored that one. We are all tied up. The best of the NBA go head to head in pursuit of winning a championship. The NBA playoffs is presented by Google Pixel beginning April 17th on TNT. Avery Johnson, Christian Coloco showing some of this next level. Yeah, Christian Coloco, when you think about him getting in transition, Arizona, they're really fast here. In transition, Dale and Terry, and, and then Coloco came back with a nice jump hook off the glass.
and Eddie Lampkin has checked back in as we check in with Lauren Shahadi. Yeah, I asked for word on him. They say he's perfectly fine, but I saw trainers tending to him by the bench before he checked and he was jumping up and down, testing his mobility. He looks okay, just stretching it and moving it around. Ball challenging all off the glass for two. Lead back to TCU, and he's got seven. Good move by him, Damian. Uh, wanted to pass that one, but didn't have to pass the lane. Stayed under control and knocked that one down off the glass. After a hang. Good attack by Matherin. Didn't settle, has missed some jump shots in this game. Two of seven from the three point line, two of nine from the field, but he's six for six from the free throw line. Not a bad way to get yourself on the board and see it go through, get into that free throw line. A lot of folks have talked about Ben Matherin at the next level. Can he be a lottery pick? Talked to him yesterday, guys, and just about maybe the, the possible distractions of that that sometimes players have to face. And, and he said he's trying to compartmentalize a lot like he did in the recruiting process. So a lot of people talking to him, you should go here, 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 and here. And so he feels like he can kind of work off of that experience to handle what he's getting here now as the NCAA tournament's taking place. Yeah, and th those outside voices, you know, they can have an effect on, on young players. It's oh, turnover. It was off TCU last. The 11th here for the Horn Frogs. And look on this possession for Arizona to continue to play this kind of a two-man game with Matherin and Coloco. They love Matherin functioning on that right side of the floor. Creaser wants to take it. And Jamie Dixon, TCU was upset. They thought that was tipped out of bounds. Didn't get that call. They work it around to Lampkin. Ball with the one triple pull up. This is poorly, and the chase down here by Larson. Larson gets tripped up. Creaser will take it again, still trying to hunt down his first points. He's 0 for 4 tonight. You can see he doesn't have his legs underneath him. Yeah, and that's trying to make something happen, Avery. And I think for him is he got to be more of a facilitator. And Smitty, you, you're absolutely 100% right. And then you got a guy inside, Coloco, who's 10 for 11 from the field. That's sealed, has the defender sealed underneath the basket. Tied at 52. We've had 10 ties, six different lead changes tonight. going to be an offensive foul on him. Three. On the lead guard for TCU. Yeah. So see here, underneath Coloco's, that lamp concealed underneath the basket. That's not a high quality shot there, high percentage shot. Now, if Coloco's one for 10, that's a different story, maybe. Creason feeding Coloco. Oh, bring in the house down. Wow. Okay, Ben. Pick me up, Smitty. I fell out of my chair. <laughs> Blocking foul on Creason. Or Larson. Check that. Pella Larson picking up the foul. Oh, they're talking right now. Look at Ben and Eddie. Ooh, go catch your body, Ben. Wow, did he cock that one back. <laughs> Eddie, in that situation, he's not trying to get the TCU fans involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They keep showing the replay in-house, and each time it looks better and better. Larson takes it away. Here's Matherin on the push. And the foul committed there before the shot. 
Lisa, you were talking about Ben Matherin at the next level. He might have moved up a couple of spots. <laughs> In the One more look. <laughs> Meet me at the top, Eddie. Ooh. And one. Larson gets it. Number one is pushing back. Underneath Wide out of open. bounds. Yep. And the defender that's guarding the inbounder, that's the first lesson that you learn. Take away the basket. Just in case there's a mistake. Well, also, not only is that a bucket, but that's Mike Miles. That's his fourth foul, and we have 12 minutes and 40 seconds left. He's on the bench. And Kreisa picks up the foul. That's number three on Kirk Kreisa. But that is huge, Smitty, with Mike Miles Jr. here on the bench, the leading scorer, the leader, the heart, if you will, on the TCU side. And you know about 80 miles from here, there's Disneyland and there's a roller coaster. These games are like a roller coaster. How can you respond when you're in a down cycle or an up cycle? Who's the go-to guy with Miles on the bench here for TCU? Well, I think it has to be Damian Bile. Not only scoring, but he's going to have to attack off the bounce and make plays. I think it's old Bannon Jr. You got a good look at it. Wow. You know, Kyer did a great job not to turn it over there. And a foul committed on Farabello. That's his first. He got the rebound, was tripping over a player, still kept his dribble to keep the possession alive for Arizona. Over Larson, both those guys, the smalls, they got into there, came back and cracked back and got that rebound. Momentum, emotion, advantage Wildcats right now. Part of a 13-2 run here for Arizona. And the Wildcats sitting in the bonus. It's a one and one. And that's um, TCU's 18 foul. Kyer's an 85% free throw shooter, but that one won't drop. Coach, I want you to put your coaching hat on. How long can Jamie Dixon sit? What's the score like? And when did you bring him back? Yeah. Think about that as Miller gets the two. I think if they're within five points with about seven minutes to go in the games, eight minutes, got to think about it, especially if you can get him in for an offensive possession, maybe sub him out for a defensive possession. But I don't think you can wait any longer. Kyer with the land. So that's another four minutes of game time. They got to yeah. go without him. And then he has a seasonal type of information on if Miles has gotten four fouls or three fouls before. And when do you bring him back? So that's when your assistant coaches are making recommendations. But, but now this is uh, this is the round of 32. This is a chance to go to the Sweet 16. So you got to get it right. A trip to San Antonio on the line. Flipping it up there is Terry, who left it short. And ball on the push, Miller. Draws the foul. Arizona Wildcats, the number one seed in the South region, looking for that sweet 16 trip. Yeah, well, how about Jaden Ivey? You talk about next level talent. Jaden Ivey checks off all the boxes. And Purdue and Michigan, the only two teams left waving that Big Ten banner. Number one seeds, it has not been easy in this tournament. Gonzaga struggled against Memphis down the stretch. Kansas, the same thing with Creighton and, and Baylor. A, a shorthanded Baylor team already has lost to North Carolina. Lauren Shahadi, what do you have? Oh, just now, Coach Lloyd confident and calm. He was pumping up the crowd a second ago to his team. He said, control the pace, said one and done will not work. We have to make two to three passes. We're almost in our flow, get there. Yeah, go at them at pace was something he just kept repeating to his team yesterday at practice. Go at them at pace. Keep coming at them. Backdoor look. That's going right at them, but Kyer left it short. 
and a jump ball will be TCU. Uh, that was a beautiful play by Damian Ma. Back door, that play was out of a, a timeout. Set play, and Damon read that one extremely well. Yes, Kyer avoided the charge, but it was no easy layup. And when Coach Lloyd is talking to his team to start the season, he said, we want to be a team that trusts our fundamentals, play aggressive, don't play timid, let it rip. That's, that's their philosophy. That's a part of their culture. And again, out of this timeout, don't nope, like Miles Jr., who's playing with a four personal fouls, still sitting on the bench. TCU's leading scorer this season. Miller denied by Coloco. Five seconds on the clock. And the shot clock did not reset. Ball oh, denied again by Coloco. Not tonight. That was a two-handed block by Coloco. Yeah, he beat that one up like <laughs> the Bongos. Oh, Ball, challenge the ball. Gets the foul. Miller, excellent job. But lots. Let's watch Christian Coloco on this one. First one goes up. He knocks that one down. And then here's the next one. This is the one you talked about, Eric. He had two hands. <laughs> Which hand to block it with? I just go with both of them. Yeah, I don't think Miller got the message. <laughs> Messing around with Coloco. This guy. Man, he's, um, we're talking about next level talent with a guy like Ben Matherin. What about Coloco? Oh, it, I sure. mean, you think about, we mentioned his stat line against Wright State. And, and putting up a stat line, 17 points, 13 rebounds, six assists, five blocks on Friday. Never been done in NCAA tournament history. And putting together quite a game again here tonight. 22 points, seven rebounds, and a couple of blocks that you just saw there. Five to shoot. Dalo gives it up. Creasa still hunting down. There's his points. Farrell the best three-point shooter there for TCU, can't get it. Don't look now, though. It's still 59-58. I asked Avery, when do you get Mike Miles back? And that's Jamie Dixon and, my, and Avery is telling me, we don't need to right now because we're only down one. From the court. Kreisa's first points of the night. I'll tell you what, he, Kreisa continues to shoot with confidence, just trying to find his rhythm. Oh, One and done that time for TCU. Matherin takes it all the way. He's in for two. Timeout, TCU. The skip pass right here by Ben. Beautiful. Kirk Carissa has missed some shots, but he knocks that one down. He lets you know it. He's happy to hit that one. Wildcats up six. We have a ball game. Follow Highlight Her for everything you need to see her do sports and culture. Scan the QR code now. Don't miss another moment. Mike Miles Jr. back in this game. Your answer with 8.36 left to play. And that's what we talked about when Steve asked me the question, what would I do as a coach? I said, look, if it's within five or six points and with eight minutes to go in the game, you gotta, you gotta get him back in the game. Maybe. Yeah, momentum is the Wildcats right yeah. now. And also, this is on the offensive end. We know things happen, but there's no tomorrow. You gotta go with him, you gotta trust him. And you're right, because it feels like Arizona has all the momentum right now. Lampkin a heads up play. And here's what I'll say with Miles coming back in the game, you want Miles trying to break down the defense, playing pick and roll, coming off screens, rather than that shot from Miller in that situation. Boy, Miles trying to impound it with. Paulo standing there as a defender. 
Got to get the ball to Mike Miles right now. Yeah, he's got a mismatch. He does have a mismatch. Miller, the spin move, popping out. Coloco taps it out. Here comes Creesa. And the transition look. Coloco passes it up. Matherin, shuffle pass, good ball movement for Aaron's holding up. Potty, bucket and one. Coloco with his 10 in attendance has tied a career high 24. And Smitty, Lisa, you guys talked about it earlier. It seems like that dunk really inspired Matherin. Now he's making plays with the pass. He got the hockey assist in that situation. Taking a look at your game summary, the points in the paint with the height here of Arizona, probably no surprise, right, that they have doubled up TCU here tonight. And 20 of Coloco's 24 points have been on dunks and layups. Oh. Mathurin gets fouled on the offensive rebound by Miller. That's four on Emmanuel Miller. Those are the little things right now for TCU. You cannot give up those type of possessions. You're down eight, 7.52 left, a lot of time left, but now you have foul trouble if you TCU, Miller and Miles, both with four. And those free throw rebounds, those are some of the deflating plays defensively. You gotta box out on the free throw line, make sure everybody does their job. Look at the size of Arizona right now on the, on the line. I mean, if you're TCU, you got to squeeze. Arizona's right at their average, almost basically for the season. They're 74% from the line on the year, and they're shooting a little bit better, 77% tonight. Nine of 10 from the free throw line for Matthew. 19 points here for the game and part of an 8 nothing run here for Arizona. We'll stay here with seven seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, I think Miles in those pick and roll situations, if there's a little bit of a window to pull up, in between that scene, he's got to look for a shot. He's got to definitely look for it here. Miles Jr. with two poles ashore. Good rebound by Eddie, giving him an extra possession. Lampkin. Foul there on the floor. Eddie doing a nice job. Seven offensive rebound, 10 points, 13 points, because they needed that possession down nine. You don't want to come down and Arizona score and you're up double digits. So this was a, that was a big time rebound. The fifth double double for Lampkin. You mentioned it, Smitty, 13 points, 10 rebounds. Zona again looking to go inside. Situations like that when you're one pass away, Presa, you gotta set up your man, you know, body ball, maybe go into the defender's body and then present yourself for that outlet. If not, Mike Miles did a nice job of shooting the gap trying to get an easy basket on that steal. Let's see where TCU goes on this one. High pick and roll. Mike Miles has to make a play. <laughs> Set back the other way. <laughs> With the Matambo finger wave. <laughs> Not in my house. <laughs> I've heard that before because he's blocked my shot. He got that one at the peak. He's blocked a lot of people's shots, Akron. Yeah. And Matherin got him. Three free throws coming up for O'Bannon Jr. 
Matthew, you don't want to do that one. You don't want to foul a three-point shooter, especially that deep away. Just want to contest straight up. And especially with a nine-point lead. And the third time Arizona has fouled on a three-point shot tonight. So now Arizona's going to downsize a little bit. Play four wing players around Coloco, try to give Coloco some more room to operate inside. Miller will check out. Micah Peavy checks back in. Peavy's coming in for Miller because he has four. Still got to watch Mike Miles Jr. with four fouls. And that free throw gives O'Bannon Jr. a new career high. He's got 20 points to lead the TCU side. Yeah, this is a situation where they're trying to get Lampkin involved on, on the pick and roll or now this dribble handoff so that they can force a switch. Matherin pulls up from 17, too strong. The rebound to Ball. Miles is open. Miles Jr. Paw skies for it. O'Bannon Jr. knocks it down. 23 and a new career high. Hustle plays, offensive rebounding, and awareness is keeping TCU in this game. Great contest. TCU's got their rebounding. Doing a nice job not giving Arizona any second shots. Picks it up. How about the big man? Did, oh, did no. he just give a mouse in the house side? No, he didn't listen. He's talking about Christian Coloco, who stands 7 1, and he said he's too small. Big Eddie is rolling. 67 to 65. It's a two point game after this play. Great hustle. Saving the passer and now backside three. Bucket from O'Bannon Jr. Chuck O'Bannon Jr. saved the offensive play, didn't let it go out of bounds, kicked it out to Damian and then sprint it to the corner for the three and then let's go Big Eddie he said too small booyah Big Eddie is here wow what a matchup with Big Eddie and Coloco and we'll see coming out of this timeout you gotta think that Arizona's gonna manipulate the defense in such a way where they get Coloco an easy catch closer to the basket. Terry bringing it in. And he's short. Here comes Miles Jr. on the push. Left hit short. Could have tied it. Peavy, another opportunity draws the foul. They are working the offensive boards. And for a team that's been significantly outscored in the paint, now you would think that TCU has the advantage in the paint. 15 offensive boards here tonight. Look at the work down there. Peavy working, Eddie working. Mike Miles Jr. a little upset with himself. He missed that point blank layup. Check in with Lauren. Over here by Coach Dixon, he's fired up just now saying, here we go. Keep Arizona out of transition. Slow them down, force them to turn over the ball, and just like that, momentum changes. 15 offensive rebounds, a plus seven on the glass total, and they've gotten to their free throw line 23 times. 
This is a TCU team that has asked themselves yesterday, why not us? Why can't we be the ones to knock off number one? Beat Kansas on March 1st. Mathurin, it's not there. Here's Bob. Lampkin is pointing. He wants, he wants the ball. Now TCU will get into their pick and roll game and spread the floor. Miles Jr. not gonna miss that one. TCU has the lead. And what Mike Miles Jr. did on that play was rejected the pick and roll. He didn't use it. Arizona was leaning a little bit. He went the other way and was successful. Yeah, Ben Matherin was accepting the pick and roll. You can't play the play, and you, like you said, like Miles just turned the corner. Look at the trap. Yeah, they are scrambling. The they forced the turnover in TCU basketball. Nabil Kareem, Seth Davis, Rex Chapman, Bob Huggins, Candace Parker. Have all the highlights and analysis on Inside March Madness presented by Buick. It's coming up next only on TBS. Plenty of action here to talk about and possibly we see another number one bow out here tonight in the NCAA tournament. Baylor the first to exit. Gonzaga and Kansas have been tested. Arizona getting all the tests that it wants here tonight. Miles Jr., little in and out triple, and draws the foul. He has two free throws coming up. And TCU, it's real vanilla. They're not doing anything tricky offensively. It's a spread pick and roll. The floor is spread. Lampkin is setting the pick. They're not using any sort of misdirection to get into it. This is what they're running. Nothing tricky, and they're and they're having success with it. Bolo picks up his four. Both of these teams are in the double bonus. One timeout left for TCU, and two timeouts left here for Arizona. The Horn Frogs are a program that have never gotten to the Sweet 16. Not only trying to knock off number one, but trying to grab a little bit of history while doing it. Creaser with the kick out here to Terry. Ian Coloco got 24 points here tonight. Creaser. An off-balance three attempt, TCU basketball. And Kingston's just not moving well now. And it's interesting to see the decision to have him in the game instead of, you know, maybe Justin Kyer. Yeah, and I thought all, no matter what, like you said, I totally agree with you, Avery, not moving well. <laughs> well or not, you don't take that shot. I mean, you have a mismatch. You got to find a way to get into the lane and make a pass and make a better play. Arizona no points in the last four minutes and 47 seconds and counting. Three-point edge here for TCU. Miles Jr. off the side of the backboard. That was a lot of contact. Here's Terry for the equalizer. And just five points for the big shot for Dalen Terry. Yeah, it looked like Miles got injured with his left arm on that last drive. Hit the floor pretty hard. And that's what happens when you got numbers coming back on the break. Give Arizona credit. They found the open man on that advantage break, five versus four. Let's watch this drive. There's some contact there. Hide the way. He's a guy that's dealt with some injuries, some wrist injuries, some ankle injuries. Yeah, they're going to have to take him out. No, he's standing the game. OK, yeah, she's staying there.
Well, they have numbers, and obviously you see Dale and Terry have to hit this shot, but because Mike Miles Jr. was down on this end, that presented numbers also to Gamble, and Terry knocked down a big one. And again, Dale and Terry had the huge three and a big dunk down the stretch of the Pac-12 tournament against UCLA. That was his first three-point make of the game, just five points but making them in crunch time. And they got to sub out Farabello. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was saying. They got to take Miles, Miles out, yeah. He'll return on the next dead ball or TCU calls it, or Arizona calls a timeout. Lampkin Jr. challenge here. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> what a night for Big Eddie! And Lisa, he <laughs> used one hand yep. to say he was too small. On this play, Big Eddie goes right into his chest. Nice little hesitation. Then he gives him two hands. He says he's too small. Nice little pump fake. And then he went through the contact with a possible and one. That is interesting. As a shot blocker with Coloco, once Eddie comes into your body and then he goes up and extends, you can jump late and potentially block a shot. Coloco's just standing on the, staying on the ground, guys. Eddie. Yeah, he was playing defense like he had four fouls. Yeah. <laughs> he only has two. Eddie Lampkin picking a night to have a career high night. 17 points here for him. So a couple of career highs on the TCU side. O'Bannon Jr. with the 23. Lampkin with the 17. Prisa laid it off. Still an opportunity here for Arizona, now trailing by two. I don't think the ball hit the rim, and they reset the shot clock. Right. That's what Eric Curry is trying to calm down the TCU side. And it wasn't just Coach Jamie Dixon, associate head coach Tony Benford. He was he was almost at the scores table. No, not at all. Did not hit. Yeah, nice pass by Creesa. Back to your point, Avery, you know, if, if scout report plays a lot, if, if you're Coloco, you got to play Eddie Lampkin. And whether he makes it, you got to contest. And if you have to foul, you foul because he's only a 53% free throw shooter. And he didn't miss that one. So you got to play percentages, understand scout report, understand your files. If you're Coloco, you go challenge that one. I don't want verticality on that one, like you said, Avery. Go get that one. And it's similar to the team that won earlier today, the University of Houston Cougars playing against Big Kofi from Illinois. Once they got him in a bad way, they fouled him. Totally correct. But in college, it can't quite be the half a shot. Right. <laughs> but when they get you in a bad way, you got to understand time, score, clock, fouls, who you're fouling. Guys, let's bring in our rules analyst, Gene Steratore. I think what you do on this one, guys, is you go and do the math on top. You've got the game clock at 152, and the shot clock was at 7 before the reset. So if you go from 152 down to 147, you're going to take five seconds off of that. And you could end up with as little as two seconds on the shot clock here if my math is correct this late in the evening. <laughs> and, a, and a full day of work, too, Gene. <laughs> it's been a great day. <laughs> we appreciate you, Gene. It has been late, but you've been fantastic for us. What a ball game. Appreciate it. You nailed it. They're going to put two seconds on the shot clock. Doug Shouse, Keith Kimball, Eric Curry. Eric Curry coming over to explain it. So two seconds left, 147 on the game clock. Gene was good at math in school, wasn't he? Yeah. Right on it. <laughs> Way to go, Gene. Math, algebra, calculus, everything. Angles, he did it all. Where would we be without Gene? Yes.
strategy right now is I would love to have a small set of pick for Coloco and get something at the basket and then the pick to picker to have your guy Ben Master come out for a shot. And sometimes it's not, it's not a screen, it's just a direct pass to try to engineer a jumping contest between Coloco and the center. Strong cross-court pass. Matherin had to put it up, and the shot clock violation. That was for the lead. I thought David and Terry made a beautiful pass to Kerr. I didn't know they had enough time to even enough, run another screen for Ben Matherin, but they did. I thought Kerr should have looked to take that one. Yeah. It's going to be a high pick and roll. Bennett Jr.'s got that career high. There's Miles Jr. who takes a peek at the shot clock. Seven now to shoot. Miles Jr. with the crossover. Foul there before the shot. Bad things happen when guards get downhill against your defense. When your defense is compromised, everything comes into play. Whether the guard makes the layup, offensive rebounds, or offensive rebound in the foul. And as a guard, guarding Mike Miles Jr., the pick is coming. You know Coloco has to help. You have to crack back. I know it's a lot of work and get in front of Eddie. Can't get the first. And that's what you were talking about, Smitty, on that last post up by Lampkin. Just foul him, send him to the free throw line. Contest. But Eddie's done a fantastic job. Eight offensive rebounds. Big free throw right here. Four of ten from the free throw line. Eddie Lampkin Jr. with the career high 18 points. Arizona calls the timeout. They've got one left. TCU has one timeout left. So to set the stage again, a spot in San Antonio on the line for one of these two teams. TCU has never been to the Sweet 16 before in program history. Let's take a look at the Capital One rewarding performance, but Eddie Lampkin is doing everything he can to try to get them there for the first time in school history. Yeah, his career high, 18 points, 11 rebounds. They need to put down nine hustle plays, also seven emotional faces. He's done it all, Lisa, for the Horn Frogs tonight. Part of a 15 to three TCU run, Arizona looking for its 19th trip to the Sweet 16. Remember, this is a Wildcat team that's awfully young, right? And they've got a first year head coach in Tommy Lloyd. People didn't know what to expect of this Arizona basketball team. An 11 0 start. We saw some signs where they beat a ranked team in Michigan. Wyoming, Illinois early in the year. We thought there could be some promise, right? 32 and 3 coming into tonight, earning itself the number one seed out of the Pac 12. And, and one of the things Coach Lloyd talked about with his team coming into the tournament, that when you're a number one seed, pressure is a privilege. So now you're in a pressure situation, and we'll see if it's a privilege for them, and can they string together some really good offensive possessions here. And tell me the strategy. You pick a team here, Smitty. Start with TCU. What do they got to get done? Well, I think right now is the biggest thing right now. You don't want to give up a three. You got to also anticipate you're probably going to their best player, Pac-12 player of the year, and Ben Matherin. And you got to rebound the basketball if it's a miss. Both of these teams have experience in tight games. Here for TCU. Back door for Mathur. It's a two, it's a one point game. Yep. Saw it coming. Nice little clear to side. They lifted Coloco. And now moving forward here, you'll see a pick and roll. Probably get the ball to Mike Miles on a dribble handoff or Damian Ball taking himself. But Lampkin will set the screen. Here it is. Ball leading in, Lampkin is there for the tip. Lampkin is there for the bucket. 20 now for Eddie Lampkin Jr. Lead back up to three. Terry with nowhere to go. 
Eddie doing a nice job sliding his feet. And after it, Paul for the tie. Best player on Arizona's side just hit the biggest shot to knot it at 75. I will say, give a kudos to TCU. Eddie Lapkin, he was switching, he was sliding, but then sometimes good defense comes down to the best player on the floor at that time, and that was Ben Mather just made a play. That was a huge shot. Could have drove it at time, but, but watch that Lapkin the first time on the offensive rebound. They just battling, he puts it in. Then on this end, Avery, Ben Mather. Yeah, and then Lampkin, again, fighting on the boards. He wants to go to San Antonio. And now here's a mistake right here on a pick and roll coverage between Miles Jr. and O'Bannon Jr. in that situation, and Ben Matherin made them pay. I think Miles thought they were gonna push it to his weak hand, and then O'Bannon Jr. thought there was gonna be a switch. So miscommunication, and Ben Matherin made TCU pay. Smitty, where do you think they go here offensively? Well, I think for one time, the last play down, they were going at Kirk Crystal on the pick and roll. But I think this time, no matter what, he's not in right now. So you got to go Mike Miles Jr. And for me, what I like, I didn't want to screen and roll. It's 75-75. I want the last play. Just open it up and let me go one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. I would say more of a fake slip pick and roll and then allow Miles to go to work. Slip out of it. TCU can take the final shot. Miles Jr. No call. Terry, the runner, the dunk. They're not going to count it. They are not going to count it. It was after the buzzer. And they will review it. But as of right now, we are going to overtime. And let's watch Dale and Terry. Does he get it off? The ball is in his hands. Let's look at the light. No, he does not get that one off. And to go back to that play, Lisa and Avery, that's the reason why I would not want a screen and roll because of the double team. But also, let's watch. Did he get bumped at half court? No call. But before that, I definitely would not want a screen and roll because you draw two and anything can happen. If I'm Mike Miles Jr., his <laughs> ability, Avery, he can beat his man and get a bucket. But kudos to the officials. They were on it on that call, and we have extra basketball to play in San Diego. This overtime is made possible by Buffalo Wild Wings. Tied at 75. Avery Johnson, Steve Smith, Lisa Bynes, and Lauren Shahadi on the sideline for us. What a way to wrap up the night. And I know if moving forward, if TCU is in that situation again, just run a 1-4 flat and get Miles in an isolation situation where he's not going to get trapped. So we'll see what happens. Well, there's a three out there. First You're possession here for Arizona. You're Damian Ball. You have to take her and drive him and something go to the paint with your quickness and size. Off the hands that time of math. A little miscommunication on that offensive possession. Well, we saw the play thrown up and regulation play where Dale and Terry makes the back backdoor pass. This time it's Coloco. Wasn't the same result. Lampkin's earning every everything tonight. He is he is playing his heart out. Now Junior Pump trying to lay it up with the left hand. Offensive rebounds and hustle plays are hurting the Wildcats and Wildcats in this second half. 18 offensive rebounds here for TCU, Smitty. Ball, here's O'Bannon Jr. Ball still loose. Coloco trying to corral it. And Peavy whistled for the foul. He's got four. 
And a double bonus situation again for both of these teams. Two timeouts left for Jamie Dixon and TCU. One timeout left for Arizona. That possession, Damian Ball made the right play, Lisa and Avey. Drove, drew two, kicked it out to Chuck O'Bannon. That's a miss, but that's the right play to make. Christian Coloco tied a career high with 24. That's what he's sitting on right now. Doug Shouse at the monitor. <laughs> Asking Jamie Dixon for a little space to do his work. And with both teams in the double bonus, you don't want to settle for any off-balance shots. The double checking on the shooters while they're at the monitor. Well, both what Terry and Coloco are there. Seems pretty clear that it's on Coloco, that Coloco will be taking the shots. Wow, this is what March Madness is all about. This is this madness all over this arena tonight. What I love is both teams are competing. They're hustling, clawing for every inch. And every possession right now in execution count, and especially free throws right now. New career high, 25 for Christian Coloca. And let's see after this play, TCU, you know, they've been running the same play, maybe run some sort of a counter to keep the ball in Miles' hand, which, Smitty, I know you love, and keep him out of a trapping situation with Coloco trapping a pick and roll. And Lampkin, another rebound. 13 in the game. He got hit. Inadvertently, he did, but they had to stop play. Miller definitely got hit across the face. Came flying in from the left side of the court with the one hand put back. Oh, he's bleeding. He's bleeding. The trainer got to get out there. Look like an inadvertent elbow here from Coloco. They got to clean that up before we can resume. Great offensive rebound. Nobody boxed him out in that sense, unfortunately. Coloco didn't do anything, and Miller just an accidental play. It's their 19th offensive rebound. Yes. Wow. Curry coming over and, and, and saying that the, the reason a foul was not called on this play, Emmanuel Miller ran right into the arm of Christian Coloco. And, oof. Emmanuel Miller said, I understand what you're saying, Lisa. It still hurt because he took that one, but that's a big time offensive rebound to give his TCU Horn Fogs a one point league in his overtime. Hopefully, they can get the blood stopped for him. Stoppage in action is just to clean up the floor here. And offensively for Arizona, they've had, you know, some success with Matherin going back door when they're on the same page. But I would put Matherin in the middle of the floor. He made that three-point shot at the end of regulation. Mm. Yep. 
He didn't throw the elbow. That's what he was telling the referee. He was actually telling the truth. He was. <laughs> set to come back in in PV's place. That's good. They got the blood stopped. So he can come back in. PV tried his best. Just gave up too much size on that play to Coloco. Two shots coming for Coloco. Lloyd didn't take out Kerr. He's been playing offense defense with him. That's the offensive rebound. It's a big one for Matherin. He's got 26. No free throw box out. And wow. I just saw Jamie Dixon say 25. They want to keep Kerr in these plays. They do, Ball. Creaso was defending Ball on that. Ball tried to get it. It'll be Arizona basketball. Good eye, Smitty. Good job by Matherin. Wouldn't allow Miller to even box him out, use his strength. What a play by him. And both guys on the free throw line, they have to squeeze the one offensive player. Can't give him any angles. Give it up to Matherin. Some contact there, but we play on. Five now to shoot. Oh, Matherin trying to foul on Lampkin. That's going to be his fourth. And, and it's funny you said that, Lisa. That was some significant contact out here. The same way Mike Miles was engaged at half court at the end of regulation, where he could have potentially uh, going to the free throw line with, with contact. So I guess at least there's, are they consistent, Smitty, in terms of how they're officiating the game now? Well, the Horn Fox didn't get the call. So if you ask the Horn Fox, <laughs> right, no. Right. If the Wildcats, Wildcats, yes. Yeah. What I think right now is Ben Matherin has made two big time plays, that offensive rebound and bucket, and then this play right here off the bounce, one on one, just the ability to get to that free throw line. And then the three to tie it to send to overtime. See here, no pick and roll. You don't need a pick and roll here. Mike Miles. Eight to shoot. Miles Jr. leans in. Count the bucket. He is so good. Let him use his strength, his ability, and his skills to make plays for you. And he just did that right there. Yeah, he allowed the big guy to just get out of there. And now he kept it. And this is what we're talking about. You got to get the ball in this guy's hands. Game. 20 for Miles Jr. Smitty, I think if we had to pay to watch this game, we, we would offer up. <laughs> yes, indeed. In a, this in a is big one. Let's see what Pac-12 Player of the Year can do. You got to keep it in your best player's hand. Let him make the play. Matherin gives it up. Creesa, no call. Creesa will get another chance at it.
This is just Will, Lisa, and Avery. And one, two, three shots missed by Kerr and Ben Matherin again on the offensive glass. His ability to leap off the two feet vertically is unreal. It's unmatched. And you know, a lot of times, guys, I, I don't like to really consistently put my self in these coaches shoes but if i if i'm coach lloyd great unbelievable play play through contact and then if i'm if i'm coach dixon i want to jump ball look like miles could have gotten his hands on that ball and tied it up so this is a tough job for both coaches they're fighting for their teams mm. this is a game of inches right now still a lot of time left Time out here for TCU. And they've got one remaining. That man, Ben Matherin, a season high 30. His career high is 31. I, he's been fantastic. Just on the offensive glass, his want to taking big shots, making big shots. Ben Matherin is showing why he's Pac-12 player of the year. That back door was huge. And this one, Lisa, was the biggest shot. But he will not be denied on the glass a few times. This one was huge. Over the top, strength to go get it, finish, and then he's making his free throws. We talked about Matherin. Especially to start the game, I think we thought he was a little bit lethargic and he wasn't really, you know, as passionate and determined to make plays. But what a change of events. Does it have to be a three? Do you go for a three here? No, you don't need a three. You need a best shot. So, and it, you can get a traditional old-fashioned three-point play, you know, with a drive to the basket. No, I don't think so, Lisa. I think what you do is you look to draw something up to get Mike Miles downhill and then the, if he draws two or three, you have guys set up where he knows where to throw it. But I use his ability and his strength to let him get downhill. Interesting right now is, for me, defensively, Coach Lloyd has two bigs. One of these bigs got to check a small like Chuck O'Bannon Jr., so he will not be in the play. So there will be no rim protection if you have Coloco on Chuck Bannon Jr. Plenty of time Chuck here on the game Jr. clock. 16 seconds on the shot clock. As you can see, Chuck Obama Jr. is in the corner right now. He's open on the weak side. He's going for it. They find him. Open. for three. Could he get the bounce? And that's hard for Christian Coloco. As a big, you're going to definitely suck in. He doesn't know to stay with the shooters. But they got that stop. And Ben doing the right job right now, running some time. And now Colocos has a size advantage with O'Bannon Jr. inside. Now he resurfaces to the corner. Single digits on the shot clock. Here's three to play. Matherin puts it up with two on the shot clock. Is that a sweet 16 slam? That's what happens when you commit two players on the ball and you don't get that crack back defender here to box out Coloco, that's what's gonna happen. You see the two defenders and now Coloco gets a free run down the middle of the floor and slams it home for the Wildcats. And Eddie Lampkin was definitely boxing out. You can't get caught standing, and that's what most people do. Now we'll see if TCU rather Arizona they're going to extend their defense because a lot of times teams will fall back and they'll allow the opposing team to just roll the ball up the floor but little light pressure here from Arizona final few seconds of this one Miles Jr. not there Lampkin another offensive rebound ball for three
cage. Unbelievable, amazing. Both teams played their heart out. Give the edge to Arizona and Ben Matherin down the stretch, the best player on the floor. And the fight from the TCU Horn Frogs, they have nothing to be ashamed of. Ben Matherin is the guy who made all the winning plays for Arizona. He's the he's best player in the country right now. He's the best player in the country. He's the best team in the country. Lauren, take it away. Ben, your teammate just said you're the best player in the country. What is it about you that shines when the lights are brightest? This is a sport team. It's a sport team. You know, uh, we, came, we came all the way from Tucson to San Diego. You know, we had a plan, and uh, the plan was to win the game. So it's all about winning. Did it sound like Tucson tonight? Coach said he wanted more fans. How'd they sound? Definitely. Uh, I think I'm going to start calling it Mikhail West. You know, it was, it was Mikhail, uh, Mikhail South, now it's Mikhail West. You know, we have all the fans cheering for us, so it's pretty fun. Sweet 16 next. Congratulations, Ben. Appreciate you. Thank you. Lisa. A season high 30 points. And the plays that matter down the stretch. Arizona Wildcats. We didn't know what to make of them. Not a lot of people did in the preseason. Well, I will say. Ben Matherin made plays down the stretch and Coloco was phenomenal. They had to bring it tonight. The TCU Horn Frogs made the Wildcats reach deeper and they did. Yeah, and both Matherin and Coloco combined for 58 points and they needed every one of those points to knock off a real savvy, desperate TCU Horn Frogs team. Congratulations to the Arizona Wildcats. The last 15 points, guys, for Arizona from Matherin and Coloco. And it was done in different ways, especially both guys. Hustle, toughness, as you can see, both guys got on the glass combined, like Avery said, 58 points, but they had 20 <laughs> rebounds. And also Ben Matherin, 11 for 13 at the free throw line. And there are only two guys in double figures for Arizona. We'll see. They'll celebrate tonight, but let's see what happens against Houston. Houston. Well, it's been fun, guys. Avery Johnson, Steve Smith, Lauren Shahadi, I'm Lisa Byington. Our producer, Burt Bondi, our director, Matt Lipp. A special thanks to our statistician, Gene Skidmore, as well. Coming up on TBS, it's Inside March Madness, presented by Buick. We'll send you the studios after these messages.